just finished just shawarma. It's a little much on the hot sauce, but it was good. Damn. Uh. Okay, I'm gonna show you a super cool and accurate way to both set exposure and fix any color balance issues in your shot. In DaVinci Resolve 14, it's a three-step process. We'll go through that. Uh, we'll be adjusting white balance in that process. And I'm gonna demystify this whole curves adjustment thing for you. I've got super easy trick for you there. And then we'll be installing and applying a LUT. Now I like to go very minimal on a LUT. I don't like to just apply the 100% the LUT to my image because you never get good results with that. So for this tutorial, I'm assuming that you already know how to get your footage into DaVinci Resolve and create a timeline um, through these tabs, media and then edit tab. And now we are in our color tab. So on the uh, color wheels here, on primary wheels, we're going to be working with, we'll start with lift and gain. If you notice here, we have a little um, crosshair over here. And this, we're gonna pick this. This is picking our black point. So we find the darkest part of our image. We know that this area here should probably be black. So let's click on that. And notice what it did to the image right away. Um, now on our gain, um, we're gonna do the same thing. This crosshair, we'll select this and we'll find the brightest part of the image. So this guy is gone to almost blown out. To you, it probably looks blown up, but that's because uh, it was super cloudy that day. Anyway, we'll select there. And now what we have is a balanced shot. Um, not only has it brought uh, the highlight values to the top uh, and brought our blacks down, uh, right down to our zero point here, but it's also uh, corrected any color issues. Um, you'll notice the numbers here, like negative, uh, 0 0.04 on the green channel and negative 0 0.05 on the blue channel, etc. So that's what it's done. It's actually color corrected the uh, areas in the blacks and in our bright areas. So we also have this white balance um, little thing here in the bottom left corner. And if we select something that's supposed to be pure white, um, See if I can get this welcome sign because it just seems a little more white than this Adidas sign here to me. And that should be pretty much right. And one way to check if the white balance is correct, if, if this auto function here did this correctly, is now we just have the regular um, qualifier here. And if I select something, like I say, that I believe to be white, um, I'm going to make sure I get the white here. It's created a point here on the curve. And if we go to, say, the red channel, and here's a trick to white balancing, all you really need to do is make sure that these all line up horizontally. So we would move them vertically to make them in alignment. So I'm going to go by the, the luminance uh, channel here, this white, and I'm going to bring the red down until it's horizontally in alignment with the white as best I can, especially with a mouse. Now I'm gonna to go to the green channel and do the same. It looks like it just needs to be lifted just the tiniest bit. And do it on the blue channel as well. And that one looks like it needs to come down just the tiniest little bit. It's pretty close there. So now our shot is perfectly color balanced. So now let's go on to the curves adjustment. We add another node, add serial node. Select back on this Y and make sure they're all ganged together. And what we're gonna do is pick an area on the curve. We're gonna select and we're gonna bring it, the, the trick is to go up and down, just very small movements until, and what it is is if you go up, or you go down, you say to yourself, which one looks better? What we do is we, we toggle it up, we go up, we go down, and just to the point, just very small adjustments until we say, I like how that kind of looks there. And then here's the trick. Between this point and this point, we're gonna go right in the middle and select another point. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna push up and down until we find a nice balance where we feel 
like it's giving us the right kind of contrast and making the image pop a little bit better. And then we do the exact same thing again. We can go between this point and this point in the center. Go up, down. See, that one looks a little bit better being up, I find. And then pick between these two points, up and down. Feel that needs to come down a little bit for my liking. It's all to taste. And same thing between these two points again. You can just keep going back and forth to get that much more granular detail. And do this down here. See that needs to come down a little bit. Up in the highlights again. I know I jump back and forth, but that's just kind of how I like to do it. You might want to go from bottom to top or top to bottom or or be like me where you're jumping around to various, see sometimes you don't see actually this is affecting this building up the top here, you do the highlight on that. So if I bring it down, then I get a little more detail back into that building, which is kind of cool. Now I'm not gonna push it too far, just go about halfway to be safe. Adding that back. Like I say, this is all just personal taste. The other thing is keep an eye. So now I'm on my highlights, if you look at the scopes, you can see what I'm doing. I'm bringing it all the way up, all the way down. I don't want to exceed that top level line there. So I'll be just, just a slight bit below that. And it's the same thing on the bottom end too. You don't want to be pushing it too far. Whatever, but that's the idea is going up and down in kind of a diagonal fashion, uh, perpendicular to the line. And uh, you will get there. Let's just stop there with the uh, curves. Now let's add another node, add serial node. And I'm gonna pull this down to the end because this is a little trick I like to do um, afterwards. So I'm going to add another node in between those two. And for this node, this is what we're gonna put the LUT on. So I right click. Actually, before we do that, we're going to make sure we can install it. I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you the same LUT that I'm going to use. Where is it here? You can find it at this website, which I'll put in the description below. And you'll click on test free LUTs before buying because they have a bunch of free LUTs. And then what I'm using is something that's contained in this. There's a bunch of LUTs in this pack here. So you can download those. Once you have them downloaded, if you don't know how to install the LUT, I'm going to show you that right now. What you do is go into the little settings icon down here in the bottom right corner. And you look under the color management under lookup tables and click on open LUT folder. This is where you're going to want to install your LUT. So if you have another uh, window open and you've saved them to downloads or wherever you've saved them, and extracted them from the zip file that it comes in and you've got a folder now now drag that folder into here i already have mine here that's this is the one here and it's the 8700 LUTs that we're going to be using so once they're installed they're like physically copied on the on your hard drive you got to click on update lists otherwise you will not have them available to you in davinci so once they are there, we'll right click on that node that we're going to use for the LUT, go to 3D LUT, and go to this LUT. Now, kind of a cool color grade, but it's a, a bit extreme. So like I say, I don't like to use the LUT at 100%. And how we can key that down is we, we click on this key icon here where it says gain this is one so that's the full 100 percent. so we're going to do half of that or not even half we're going to do 0 0.3 of that and hit enter and i'm just going to click over here to get rid of that now i'm going to toggle this on and off with command d and just see what it does see it just adds that little bit of the teal and orange vibe color wise it just helps it pop and i'm going to turn all of the nodes off to see what we've done so far See, that's where we started. And that's what we have as our end image. 
And I totally forgot about this other little trick that I had mentioned earlier. So we're going to select that node and go into the curves area here and select luminance versus saturation by clicking there. And these are the darker parts of the image and this is the brighter parts of the image. So obviously this would be pure black and this would be pure white. So what I want to do is get rid of any color that exists on my pure black. Um, but I want it to slowly add color back as the image gets brighter. So most of this area over here would be black. So I'm going to click around here and I'm going to drop my black down here. And we'll toggle it on and off in a second so you can see really what difference this is making. And we're going to do the same thing on the whites, uh, but we're going to do it a little closer to the end because um, we want we still want a little bit of uh, color in the brighter parts of the image. And another point to note is that whatever saturation we have set as a result of these nodes, this middle line is that saturation. So if you push it above that, you're saturating the image more. Below, you're desaturating it more. So we're just going to kind of leave it where we had set it. All we want to do is drop off as we get really close to those darker parts of the image, mainly our black. We want it to be pure black. And we also want our whites to be pure white. Now let's toggle that on and off. Actually, so if we pay attention to, say, this woman in a red jacket, I'll turn it off, see how it fills the color, and now it creates a little more dimension. And um, the areas that are supposed to actually have shadow actually show as shadow instead of being filled with the red color. Um, which is the exact problem we're trying to solve. So see, I'll turn it off. That's without the adjustment. But when we do this little trick over here, I'll turn it back on. We get a little more dimension to the image. And if we have a lot of similar clips um, shot on the day, what we can do is hit view stills, grab still, and it creates kind of a template that we can drag on to other footage. So let's click on the next clip which is this shot here. And let's just apply right away and see what we've got. We may need to do some adjustments, but drag and drop it on there. Look at that. We're almost there. Of course, the, uh, uh, the actual um, exposure might be slightly different, would be slightly different. So we can actually redo that if we want, or if you just want to go manually. If anything, if you find that the, the the shot looks a little too dark in the mid-range. Sometimes you can just pump up the gamma or bring it down overall by dragging it here. I'm not going to do that. I think I think it looks pretty decent there. Uh, let's try this shot. Same thing. I'm just going to drag and drop to start. Just If we want to just do little adjustments, um, just bring these blacks down. I'm looking at my scopes over here to just bring them down a little bit further. Maybe bring the uh, gamma up just a tiny bit, and, th and there we go. So if we really want to get through a lot of footage quickly, we can do that. And if we feel this is a little closer, um, then what we could do is just create another um, create another preset here by going to View Stills, Grab Still, and we're going to use this one now when we select, drag, drop, and we're pretty much there. Um, I think this one might be able to use a little more of a gain there we go. And then I'm just going to dial back the highlights here so we bring them back into range. And there's our shot. And this last one is a indoor shot that I'm going to, well, maybe not the last one. Um, I'm going to start with the original one. We'll drag and drop. See, and that one doesn't look near as good. So let's just go back to the correction here. And we're going to do the same thing with the lift. We'll look for a, an area we know is black. Let's pick down here an area that we believe is white, which should be right here. Look at that. See how easy that is? I'll do one more indoor in a small Eaton Center. Um, let's start again with the first one. 
Not too bad, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna redo this lift and, and gain. Find black. There, and the brightest part of the image would be up here. Okay, now overall, because, and, and that's properly exposed there, but I think this area, because we're not controlling the light in this shot, it's a little dim in the mid-range. So let's pull up the gamma. And now we have a little more pleasing shot right there. Okay. And that's pretty much it. So like I say, I will be creating a tutorial for beginners on DaVinci Resolve 14, which will take you through from getting your footage into Resolve, creating a timeline, uh, and then starting a color grade and then doing the final delivery. Well, I hope this was helpful. I plan on doing a lot more of these videos this year. If you don't wanna miss them, make sure you subscribe. I will see you on the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Damn.